Welcome to real winter. Air temp, negative 13. Wind, 20 to 35 today. Got him. Oh, boys. There he is. There he is. Oh, yeah. What is going on, guys? Well, I don't know if you guys could tell. Brutal outside. Welcome to real winter. Air temp, negative 13. Wind, 20 to 35 today. Brutal conditions outside. But with that crazy cold, comes new ice at new places so that's what we're doing today did not get an early start today so we got a little bit of daytime and then we're banking on a hard afternoon evening bite right and um we're out here at a place we have not filmed yet this winter and that's always exciting to me and um we got to get set up though this is not going to be a video where we can run around mitch was going to come today there's really no point because the cameras aren't going to work outside for more than about five minutes anyways i mean the reel feels like negative 30 right now so <laughs> absolutely brutal um but we're fishing some shoreline structure anywhere you have a really big body of water generally there's going to be two bites a shallow bite that's connected to shoreline structure and then a deeper bite which would be like your the humps out in the middle of the lake type situation. There's walleyes on both, right? A lot of times those shallow fish will be a little bit more morning, evening bitey. The other ones will be a little bit more um, kind of throughout the day, I would say, but still strong morning and evening bites. Now, we're obviously fishing in the shack today, but whenever you're gonna commit a lot of time to one spot, very important to know where you are, I guess you could say, and what kind of piece of structure you're on. We're fishing a big point complex. I'm not gonna set up like right on the tippy tip and I'm not gonna set out on the deeper fingers. I'm gonna set up essentially right where the shallow finger tails off and kind of funnels into the deeper finger. And this is a situation where having a waypoint here from the summertime in my boat is gonna tell me what I want. Whenever I'm gonna sit in a shack for a while, I either wanna know that I'm on a very good structural sweet spot or I wanna know that I'm on a good transition. A lot of these big natural lakes like this, a big travel highway is going to be your rock to sand. I do a lot better on rock to sand or intermingled rocks on a sand flat than I do just in really big chunk boulders a lot of times. So we're going to punch a hole and uh, hopefully use the underwater camera to kind of make sure we're right on this transition, which we should be pretty close because of my waypoint from the summertime. The odds without any knowledge of you kind of coming out here for the first time ever, setting up on a spot, is it still recording? Yeah. The odds of you coming out to a spot you've never been to before, setting up a shack and sitting there for 12 hours or five hours or whatever, isn't very high likelihood of catching a lot of fish doing that. So even though it's just brutally cold outside, it's worth taking the extra you know, 10, 15 minutes, even if we got to drill a bunch more holes to kind of find this transition. And I know I'm really close because of my waypoint, but it is always nice to get some kind of visual confirmation. And I've definitely got sand right there. I have to do a little <coughs> twisteroo on it here. Oh, see that? Is that the transition right there? I think it is. So you see how it's kind of like plain sugar sand that way? A couple mixed rocks. And you can almost see that edge like right there. We'll keep twisting around. Yep, plain sand. Plain sand. And then over here we get that transition. You guys are probably gonna be able to see this a lot better than me. It's so bright outside. Yeah, it definitely looks like we're close. Maybe we'll punch one more hole and take a look, huh? 
Yeah, so we are definitely close. I had a lot of that plain sand right there. I can't see super well out here in the broad daylight. In the shack, it'll be super obvious, but you could almost see that transition in that hole. And you could definitely tell that we're kind of in this rock here. So somewhere right between these two or right on that last hole, we're probably gonna be right where we wanna be. These rock to sand transitions act like kind of an edge for these fish to relate to. And they get on these big spots, sure they can kind of move over it however they want but all fish like edge weed edge temperature edge um, a depth edge as it breaks out in this case a rock to sand edge and uh, we should be able to make something happen on that so stay tuned we got to get the shack set up it is insane outside we'll get inside get some lines down and catch up with you guys in there Oh, we got fire. I don't know if you guys could tell how ridiculous it is out here. It's one of those days you almost feel ridiculous for even going fishing. But, I mean, well, there wasn't really an alternative plan, so here we are. All right, we got the dead stick down. I'm going to fish two different jigging rods. One's kind of the same. This one's actually the tungsten version, but Castmaster... This is a quarter ounce spoon with that flicker blade on there. If they just want that up and down type of deal. I mean, it is just a monstrous, monstrous cold front. So I would not be surprised if fish are a little skittish. However, if fish do want something with a little bit more calling power, I got the big old hyper, Acme hyper rail here. And this might be one of the best kind of clear water, bigger fish jigging baits I've ever used. Um, obviously you guys know how much I like it in the summer, but um, maybe we'll start with this, go back and forth between the spoon or just kind of see what fish want, whatever. But anywhere where fish are very visually bitey, you work this bait up high and it does those big zigs and zags and it just calls a lot, a lot of visual calling power. And on top of that, it can bring fish into the dead stick too. <laughs> Holy cow, right away. Wow, oh, he was there. Oh, wow, right off the bat. I mean, we literally don't even have everything rolling yet. I got my dead stick. <laughs> there we go. Wow, I mean, that took like no time. Probably not the biggest one we're gonna get today. But dude, I mean, I, we don't even have all the cameras rolling. We're running on the half camera crew right now. Just barely had the dead stick down put a spoon down I was waiting for a camera to thaw out there we go wow number one dude that was unexpected how fast that happened now is that going to be a sign of things to come I don't know nice walleye though 17 incher see you later buddy we're kind of hoping for a couple of those big fat you know 23 24 25 inches today or potentially bigger first time on this lake for the winter so we will see what happens believe that you guys I was just adjusting a camera <laughs> you guys like that delayed hook set well this is going down right away I was literally just looking at the thing I was like all right it takes me just a second to get everything rocking and rolling do we seriously have another one on this too wow when it happens it happens huh Anyways, I was literally just getting everything set up, just threw the Mega Live down, got that rocking and rolling, put a camera on it right away, and look at that right there. Perfect walleye to start it. You guys like that hook set? My bail was literally open when it bit. By the way, we have a fish on the dead stick right now. My bail was literally open when that fish bit. <laughs> I closed it, dropped the rod, and hammered him. <laughs> let's go down. We picked a good spot right away here. Now let's see what we got on the dead stick. Got him right there. 
most of the time when you cut two at the same time, they're going to be similar sized. You'll see them kind of running in pairs. This guy's a little smaller though, but still kind of that same eater class, you know. Well, that's cool. Three fish, bing, bing, bing. Now we just got to work on that big bite, huh? Man, when it happens, it can happen fast. And a lot of times when you're just fishing walleyes like this, and we're just kind of like set up on a spot, what you'll see is stuff just like that, where you'll sit here, sit here. And we haven't been sitting here long, and maybe the slowdown's coming, but all of a sudden it's like ding, 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 you know, there's two, three fish in real quick succession. Little 14 incher right there. See you later, little buddy. Well, I'll do that all day if they want to sit here and play like that. Oh yeah, he ate it. He ate it. Didn't look like a giant mark. Well, it's probably been about 20 minutes since that last fish. And that was the first one I've seen. So we might not be on top of a million fish currently, but they have, pretty much every fish we've seen has tried to bite. So, I mean, that part's really good. I just looked down at my graph and I was like, all right, 15 more minutes, if we don't mark a fish, we're moving. Obviously today we don't have a whole lot of alternatives except for fishing in the shack here. Got him. Right there. Feeling all right. Definitely feeling all right. I might be pleasantly surprised by this fish's size here. Where you at, bud? Where you at? Oh yeah, nice walleye. Nice walleye. <laughs> oh man, and they are so fun on this dead stick rod. It's a 30 or a 34 medium moderate, so you get a lot of play out of these fish. And this one's real angry here. We'll get you, bud. We'll get you. You guys can probably kind of see him there. There we go. That's a nice walleye right there, man. And he is coming in all angry. <laughs> oh, dude, I love it. You know, the conditions could be better outside. It could be less brutal but we do need some cold for making ice and if i can sit here and do this all day i mean this is gonna be a fun one normally i get just like uh, stir crazy sitting in the shack all day but if we can stay busy catching fish and keep our mind occupied this will be a super fun day that little treble right in the corner of the mouth there you generally don't need you know, a really big hook to do this, you kind of key it to the size bait you're using. So we're just using either like um, bigger fathead size minnows or smaller sucker minnows on that dead stick. And that's just a standard number 10 treble right there. Real clear water, so six pound fluorocarbon. That is a beautiful walleye right there, man. We'll take those all day long, huh? Cold front, always worth having a dead stick down. And really, if you're gonna camp yourself up here in a shack, if you're watching fish come in and not hit a jig, throw a dead stick down. Some days I have noticed it's better to sit here with two jig rods, one very aggressive thing, one more subtle spoon. But they're obviously biting the dead stick today. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh my gosh, one flying, oh my gosh, he just ate it. All right, I gotta go. That's a bigger fish. That's a bigger fish. Unless it's a pike, which it definitely could be. Just let that last fish go. I was talking to Mitchell. He was wondering how it's going out here. Got him. Oh boys, oh boys. <laughs> all right i don't think we got a walleye here it's probably gonna be a pike there is some real big pike in this lake don't know if this is one we're fishing with a softer rod and six pound fluoro so you know we're gonna be a little unknown the thing i don't want to do is get caught in the ice here which i already am so i could somehow get that out you have to remove a glove here probably Keep that rod a little loaded up there. Oh, 
don't want the line to get stuck in the ice, that is for sure. There we go. Now we're free. The fish is somewhere way over there. Might have to get this out of the way too. Now the question is, do we got like a real big one or just like a 32 incher, you know? Try to turn this around here. That strike was violent though, wasn't it? That was a very violent, I mean that fish just charged. Oh, he's not super big. Not a super big one. You can get him, I mean, 40 inches out here. This one's not gonna quite be that big. Big, good fatty though. 32 inch fatty it looks like. But hey, we'll take them. Any fish that we can get without running around like crazy today is gonna be a good one. Oh, 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 he's not quite ready yet. Cause I don't know if you guys can hear that wind outside or see the shack movement, but it is, it is a gnarly day out. He's got it right in the corner, which about 50-50 shot of getting him here, but we got him. There we go. <laughs> oh man. Well, he didn't mess around. He absolutely annihilated that minnow. Here's my other players. Right there, don't do the death clamp, buddy. Just let me get that hook out real quick. And there we go. Just like that. <laughs> nice gator to get the day rocking and rolling, huh? Well, we're catching fish. That's the important part. Now, a lot of times when you're fishing in big water, there'll be a lot of spots. Oh, look at that. He's double tagged, too. Isn't that interesting? I'll read the tags off to you guys. So we can remember, in case we want to report it, these tags been on here for a while here. We are in the state of Minnesota, 392763. I would assume they make the tags the same number. That wouldn't make any sense, because then they wouldn't know, right? 392764. So maybe they tag them both at the same time, because they're consecutive numbers, in case one tag falls out or something. I don't know. There we go. Old gator going back down the hole. Well, they're a riot on this rod. I can tell you that. <laughs> that was fun. Generally, ice fishing, a couple tips that seem to generally hold true no matter where I go. If you're trying to get on walleyes on body water you don't know or don't have a ton of familiarity with, pick a huge spot, right? Pick the biggest point in the lake with a lot of depth in that eight foot range to 25 foot range. That's a big slow tapering point with a lot of different depth zones that tails out into deeper water. A spot like that, there's going to be walleyes on it somewhere, right? They might be in five feet of water. They might be in 27 feet of water. They might be in 33 feet of water off the edge. But if you pick the biggest spot on the lake that's got shallow water, intermediate depth water, and deep water access, those spots will always hold fish. And then it becomes time to kind of like fine tune that once you start finding fish a lot of times. Like we, when we set up on this spot, finding that perfect edge where it goes from sand to gravel. Maybe it's finding a dip where there's two big boulders here and then it drops out to the basin right there. But a lot of times what I think about, especially when I'm gonna do something like this, where I'm gonna sit in one spot all day long because I don't wanna move and it's too cold out, is don't pick a tiny little spot. What are the odds that a fish is swimming around and he's like, oh, let's go to that tiny spot, right? That tiny little sweet spot. A lot of times fish are cruising a big spot like this and then you put yourself on a big travel path on these bigger spots and you're gonna be around a lot more fish versus a lot of times as anglers, I feel like we're always thinking like, let's pick out that little needle in the haystack spot. There's gotta be so many fish there, right? almost never seems to work that way for me. You Generally, you want to be finding the littler sweet spots on these much bigger spots, and that's generally the kind of areas where you can find walleyes or sit in one spot all day and have continued success from fish swimming through. Got him. Wow, that one came out of nowhere. What do we got here? Come here, buddy. Oh, yeah, absolutely choked it. <laughs> well, listening to a podcast in the middle of the day. And holy cow, man. <laughs> and a lot of times during the middle of the day hour, 
all I'll do is just go to a big aggressive bait sometimes on one rod keep that dead stick down the hole but keep that big aggressive bait going just try to call stuff in maybe get one to react to bite and look at that hyper rattle down his mouth holy cow did he eat that thing huh that's how you like to play with them right there and you could see how caught off guard I was with that whole process we'll get this guy popped off here there we go I would love to be out running around chewing up a bunch of water but it is just nasty out I can take a lot of bad weather but uh, with how insane this wind is you know easy 25 30 plus at times um, we'll sit in the shack and look at that sexy little color right there that's kind of like a rendition of glow perch super sexy bait but that's all we're doing kind of shuffling through jigging presentations and that one absolutely super annihilated that thing probably went 20 30 minutes without marking a fish but uh you know towards that after late afternoon hour that it's gonna get real good in here again just because um it's that kind of spot more than likely but there we go another nice walleye on the jigging presentation this it's one punt in the dead stick yep he's got it he's got it he just ate it and just ate the dead stick look like a decent mark huh look like a decent mark take some line buddy take some line Man, everything is cold and frozen today. That is for sure. Redirect this a little bit. Maybe get some light over here. Oh yeah, now he's really running. All right, you ready? This guy might just get tight on his own. Yep. That's feeling all right. That's feeling decent. Oh. Not thinking giant, but definitely a pretty nice fish here. Come on, bud. Come on, bud. He came in, he didn't like make a big aggressive swing at the minnow. But he definitely, when he ate it, he ate it pretty good. Oh, oh, oh. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Just gotta get your head up the hole here, bud. You might be kind of tangled a little bit here. Feeling nice, though, when they're doing that. We'll take them, come on, come on, come on. Oh yeah, nice walleye, real nice walleye right there. <laughs> there we go, just a fatty man. That is what I like. Hopefully, I'm sure the lighting's horrendous, but you know what? It's kind of par for the course <laughs> when you're ice fishing. Look at that man, beautiful walleye right there, huh? Tough to beat that. On the dead stick, on the jig rod, whoever they bite, we will take them, that is for sure. We'll get this guy popped off real quick. Hook deep, but not bad at all. Look at that, it's just like skin hooked almost. A lot of times you can just trace that line down with your finger, push it backwards a little bit. That's the trick that works good most of the time. And it worked good that time too. There we go, look at that fish, huh? That is awesome right there. <laughs> frigid, frigid cold temps. But we're catching some fish. We'll take it there, that's a nice fish right there, huh? Let's let that guy go. See you later, mama. I like, I like the build on those. Definitely liking the build on those fish right there. hunting it. Oh yeah, you guys see that tip? <laughs> oh man, dude, he hit that thing. It's so cool to watch him hunt that thing. Especially when you're using a bigger minnow and the minnow kind of like is getting after it. 
Oh, this is probably going to be the last fish of the day. It has been a good day though, at some extreme cold conditions. He's still just sitting there, see him on the bottom. It's just hanging out. He's probably got her good though, eh? Let's put the screws to her. Got him. That's feeling right. That's feeling real good. Oh yeah, that's good head shakes right there. Where you at, bud? That's feeling right. Oh yeah, real nice walleye. Real nice fish. <laughs> Dude, this just never gets old. Just never gets old. Make sure we got a decent camera angle. There he is. There he is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that, man. How does a day get any better than that? For fishing, the super cold stuff, and having a day like this, extremely rewarding, man. That is too much fun. To end on a real nice fit, fat fish like that, I'm sure we could stay into the night, you know, and just keep catching fish. But it uh, is going to feel good to be home. Unthaw all the gear out, and because we are on the road again, starting the day after tomorrow. So we're running full speed right now. That is a super nice fish right there, man. Wow. Fatties, dude. I absolutely love it. Beauty. Let's let them go. What a fun day it's been. Oh, I absolutely love it. <laughs> well, like I said, I'm sure we could sit here and keep catching more, but let's pack it down and get out of here before it's completely dark. And, uh, well, I'm amazed that we actually did this good for um, a short amount of time and the brutal cold front and only fishing in the shack. That's pretty good fishing. Alright guys, that is it for today. Beautiful sunset on a beautiful negative 30 wind chill day. Caught a pile of fish and beat the cold front. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed all the live content. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying this winter as a whole on the ice. And uh, it was inevitable that eventually we we're gonna run into some challenging weather, but we're here and we're making the most of it. So I'm gonna get off the ice. I'm gonna get everything in the garage, thaw it off and uh, make another trip in a day and a half. So um, appreciate you guys following us along this ice season. It means a lot, allowing you guys um, liking, subscribing, commenting, allowing me to do what I do every single day. Greatly appreciate it. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. We'll see you guys on the next one.